Hello, today I'm going to show you some fundamentals of Meteor, like pretty basic, but it, they are important because we use them all the time. Like Meteor is client, Meteor is server, Meteor is Cordova, Meteor is startup, and some other very helpful parts of Meteor. So let's start. Uh, first, I would like to show you like how to use Meteor is client, Meteor is server, Meteor is Cordova. The idea is to identify like the environment that we are running. As you probably know, like Meteor can run the same file in the server and in the client. So this is really nice. So let's show you one example here. I'm running like the simple app. I just run Meteor Create and I have this app running here. I can click and show many times, but I would like to do something different if I'm in the client or if I am in the server. So I'm going to get this function here and I'm going to extract to a different file. It can be here in the links. So I'm going to remove from here and I'm going to paste here so I can insert a link from this file. I'm going to also export this function so I can add an export here. So this full function now is accessible outside of this file. So now I'm going to return here because I want to use this function here. And I'm also going to a, to a file that's only used in the client. And I'm also going to open this app. And I can also call this function, let me see, like here. Okay. So let's suppose the idea here is to add a link. So I'm going to return this to add link, uh, add link and count because I'm going to still count here. So I can also rename this at link and count. And so I can insert the link here. Let's see. Okay. Title and URL title. Let's put like my title. Oops. My title and the count. Okay. And also my URL. Oh, it's counter. Sorry again. I'm going to put an URL here, like my link and the number as well, dot com. Okay, so this code is going to run in my client, but it can also run in the server because this main file here, if you look to package.json, we have the main module here. We're going to record later a video about like how to set up your files in Meteor, but you just need to understand like this main server is going to run in the server because of this main module configuration here. So it's going to run in the server. So let's try to log some information here so you can understand what's happening. I'm going to put like Meteor is running in the client now. And I'm going to put the Boolean here, Meteor is client. You can import Meteor, like import Meteor, Meteor slash Meteor. And I'm also going to ask the same question for the server. So let's save. You're going to see our server restarting here. Okay. And now let's go to the browser. Let's refresh here. Add link and count. My title zero there. Let's see if I have here, oh, I have some, these are not related errors. So as you can see here in my console, Meteor is running the client now. Yes, so it's true. And Meteor is running the server now. It's false. So you can use like a server no matter where or any is client no matter where, and you're going to receive the right result here. And if you run this code also in the server, it's not running because I don't have any items. Uh, I already have items, so I'm going to remove this here. So it's going to run even if you have items and I'm going to save and you can see like for each link that I'm inserting, Meteor is showing like if it's in the server or if it's in, like here, it's always in the server and here it's always in the client. So you can use this even to import different code. You can use this to implement maybe a different function. Suppose that like your function is depending the window object if you are in the client. So you can use these statements to have like if Meteor is in the client, if Meteor is in the server. So that's the idea here. Okay, you could have like, for example, I just want to insert links in the in the server. You could have like, okay, if I am Meteor 
this client, I could ignore this, like I could just return. This is just a, a silly example, but you could do like logics like this. So let's see what I also have here. Cordova is the same, but it's for Cordova. When you run your app inside the native app using the Cordova integration that Meteor provides, you can also identify there. That's very, very useful because in some cases you need to get like a plugin that is only available in Cordova. So you need to do this check. Otherwise you're going to get an error in your web browser. So that's really, really necessary to, to use when you have plugins and you need to have like, maybe you, you want to use the native camera if you are on Cordova and you are not going to use the native camera if you're not in Cordova. So it's really important to use this helper as well. Let's see the startup function. Uh, it's another one and it's a really important one because in the server, as you can see here, Meteor is going to run your startup functions when everything else is already uh, initialized correctly. Like your imports here are all scanned and everything is okay. So it's really nice also to use startup functions. You could run code like this, like I put this console here, but it's better to put in the startup function if possible, because so you know every module is evaluated and Meteor is really ready to run any functions that you want when the server just starts. And it's also nice to see that you have Meteor Startup also in the client. And this is like when the DOM is ready, like when the, your initial HTML is ready. So Meteor is going to call this startup. For example, using React, you should call the render method from React inside startup function. So you know your DOM is ready because otherwise maybe this element is not going to be there. So it's really important to do like this instead of doing like this outside the function, okay? And you can also put some logs if you want to see it, if it's running, if it's blocking, and you can have many startup functions. So they are going to run in the same order they are, they are declared, but usually you don't want to, to depend in the order. So you just put independent functions in different files and they are going to run. It's important that these files are evaluated. So you need to import these files somewhere. Like, or you need to declare them here, or they need to be imported from this point forward. Otherwise, if they are not in your import tree, they are not going to run, and then your startup function is not going to be registered with Meteor Startup, okay? Another one is one that I already have in the console there, that is the Meteor Absolute URL. So if you don't know where your server is running, you can use this utility function. This is really helpful, like if you want to send an email in development, maybe you need to point to localhost. But if you want to send an email to a client in production, you want to use the production email. Uh, the, sorry, the production domain. If you want to send an email in, on staging, you want to send a different URL. So Absolute URL is going to provide you this uh, information and you don't need to do anything. And you can also provide like, oh, I want to send people to the welcome page. So if I restart here, you have the slash welcome here. So you can append other things here. So that's really helpful. And the last two here, let me explain first the release because the release is a very simple one. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to put release here. You don't need to use this very often, but if, if for some reason you need to check the mature version in runtime, you can also check here. If you are just like, oh, what is the version that I'm running? You can always open this file here, dot mature slash version. Yeah, sorry, slash release. So you have the same information here. So it's not necessary if you just want to double check, but if you want to have like some custom logic here or something, you can be sure that you are running a specific version. And remember, like every version of Meteor, we also have a specific version of NPM, a specific version of Node.js. So it's really nice to have this control. Usually you don't have this control when you're not using Meteor because people can run any version of these tools. So Meteor provides this nice way that you can be sure that you're running a specific version of Node.js, NPM, and also Yarn if you install Yarn with Meteor. Uh, the last one that's really, really important, almost every Meteor project is using it, is the setting. So I have a setting here to, to show you, like a very simple setting, like my email here, as my default email and also a homepage title. And they are different because this one is in the first level of my JSON and this other one is in the second level inside the public key. 
the public key is going to be available in the client and the, the not public key, like the other keys that are here, are not going to be available in the client. So we can run again with dash dash settings, settings JSON. In this case, I am inside the private folder. So I can run like this. And Meteor is going to inject the settings for me in this variable here. So let's change this, let's save. And it's going to restart. And here we go. You can see the settings here. As I, am, as I am in the server, you can see both. Now let's go to the client and let's also do the same. Console log meteor dot settings. Oops, my autocomplete did the wrong thing here. Okay, let's save. So it's going to refresh here as well. As you can see in the client, you just have the public key. So we are not exposing all your settings in the client, just the one that you want to have in the client. And you should use the public uh, namespace here. Okay, so we can use this as you would like. Maybe in this case, I could do like change my title here using meteor settings dot public dot default. I don't remember the name that I use it. Oh, I have it here, right? Yeah, default home title save and it's going to to refresh welcome meet your blah 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 oh i don't need this yeah welcome to meet your core 101 that is my setting here so you can use this to store some keys to store some credentials if you like just be careful because you don't want to publish these credentials with your repository on GitHub. So you should start in a different folder using something that is more appropriate for, for keys. But that's also a nice way for packages because in some packages you want to control some behaviors in the startup. So we also have some options that like Mongo packages, you have some options that you can, you can configure like this and then you can define your options. Usually it's like inside a packages key and you can also use like this and you have your configurations here. Oops, it's, it's yeah, like this. Yep, and you can have some configurations here. So if you're creating packages as well and you have different options, you can also use to put some options here and then you can load your settings in runtime. So that's pretty much it. Like I, I think you, you are going to use all these options like many times. And you can check more options in our docs, uh, docs.meteor.com slash API slash core. And that's it for today. See you in the next video.